Yeah, this is what happens with the coronavirus when you can't go to the hairdresser anymore. Okay, whatever. Okay, so let's forget about my hair and let's talk about online work in our branch a bit. And here I will heavily rely on your comments. So I will try to start a conversation and then once you chime in with your comments, I will try to continue with other videos because I'm sure that a lot of you have now uh, newly acquired experiences when it comes to online work uh, in the time of uh, spreading of the coronavirus of 2020, if you're watching from the future. As we all know, some professions can work remotely and some cannot. Surgeons, bakers, massage therapists cannot really do their job from a remote island yet, as we know. On the other hand, we have web designers or graphic designers who in recent years almost exclusively work from wherever the heck they want. And in the time of a global pandemic, we are learning that a huge number of industries can function with their workers sitting in their garden, pardon me, home office, or at least in theory they can, time will show. But where does architecture fall on that list? Well, in my experience, uh, too far on the right side of the graph at the moment, together with people whose physical presence is unavoidable, and I find that very strange. Now, let us think about it for a minute, and uh, as I said, once you join the discussion, continue thinking about it and discussing about it more. Now, first, there are some people who claim that architects are not engineers, sometimes explicitly and sometimes implicitly by distinguishing a part of the building done by an architect and part done by an engineer. Now, let me clear this up shortly. Like it or not, architects are engineers and a big part of their job is a job of an engineer. Now, not all of it is and that is what will make this analysis slightly harder. A part of the job is sometimes going back to the kindergarten years and cut out paper, build some models, do some paint drawing, and afterwards come to the elementary school and basic arithmetics, followed by simple and then high school level geometry. But then we move into the static analysis, material physics, the detail design, and things get really complex and really precise. Now, don't jump immediately at the fact that I compare the design with playing in the kindergarten. I'm just making fun of it. It does take years and years of experience and sophistication, general knowledge to know how to play with those paper cutouts properly. But looking at an overview of things to be done, there is nothing you cannot do alone, right? In fact, a huge percentage of architects are solo players, one-man show offices. So if you, can, if you can do it alone, you can do it from whenever you want. Yes, you will have to travel to the site and meet with the client, but then you can go back and lock yourself in a room in a capsule hotel, hotel in Tokyo for a few months if you want. Now, the obvious argument that you have been screaming at your monitor since the beginning of this video is larger projects need more people, more people means more cooperation, and cooperation is done face to face. That is the fastest and the most efficient way. Is it though? Okay. Be honest, many of you had online meetings and many of you had important meetings for which you decided that this is crucial and we should really meet in person. You had a two-hour meeting and you left the building thinking, okay, we, we could have done this online. Or even worse, we could have done this in a couple of emails. To me, this happens all the time. And in my experience, the problem is only the division of work. Nowadays, all software is moving to the cloud and online platforms, and with all the tools you need to chat, mark, review different parts of the projects, do live updates, etc., etc. So the only thing you need is to realize that a building is a machine, and every machine can be fractally divided into smaller units of work. And with new online platforms, we could all be literally working on a single model, and everyone is working on their piece of the puzzle, on their own layer. And through a couple of steps of review and approval, all of those people can upload their work and update the model and make it more and more detailed with every step. What helps is also fully parametric software. And then you can say, Mark, please set up a grid of the building. Anna, please take the grid, set up the basic facade planes of the building, connect them parametrically to Mark's grid so that whenever the grid changes, your planes shift automatically. Peter, please, set up the structure, columns and beams, beams, not beams, but connect them to the grid and give them the link to, a to the facade plane so that whenever any of you change something, the whole model gets updated. Maria, take each facade plane from Anna as an input and develop the facade grid. But just develop the wireframe. Of course, whenever the facade planes change, your wireframe will change as well. So develop those parameter parameters and logic well. The wireframe will be taken over by Philip, and Philip, if you want to take a simple wireframe as an input, 
Uh, we will use this particular facade manufacturer, automatically parameterize the joint connections and the horizontal and vertical members so that when the green changes and then the planes change and then the wireframe changes, all automatically your facade elements also will follow this update. Christina, can you please take these templates that Peter is developing and you will parameterize shop drawings? So for every facade panel, we will have automatically generated shop drawings and CNC files. And whenever anything in the building changes, everything, including the shop drawings, will be updated. Now let's see, who wants to take over the mechanical, electrical and plumbing installations? Now you get the idea and all of this communication can easily be done online with a smart division of work. So if you create one connected parametrical model and everyone is doing their part and the assembly of the entire building is constantly updated, why can't they chat, chat from time to time or have a video call and then continue doing their part of the job? I see no reason why and in my practice it has been proven that this works. And I think that this unfortunate time of the pandemic will prove that. Of course it will only prove that in well-organized offices with modern software. It might be a disaster for antiquated work processes. But hey, what can I tell you? The whole reason of this YouTube channel of mine is to preach change and adaptation to new developments in architecture and building industry. So please tell me, a lot of you are working from home right now. Is it working? If yes, why? If no, why? I will be happy to hear your experiences and then continue this discussion in the follow-up videos. So do that, subscribe, share, stay free as much as the social distancing is allowing you and uh, let's discuss further. If you want to create your own cool plugins like Voronax or any of our other plugins, I can teach you how to do it. And if you go to proarchitect.teachable.com, you will see already some of the courses there, the Rhino Developer C++ course or the Rhino Developer C Sharp course. Uh, you will get small C++ and C Sharp basic courses with them. And in the future, you will get to see a lot of other courses on similar subjects. You can enroll the, in the course, you can see all the explanation here. You have more than 10 or 11 hours of video. The first couple of videos are free where you can check out if you are able to download the software and create your own plugin. And afterwards, there is a lots of lots of uh, videos explaining all the basics of the development for Rhino so that you can create your own plugin.